These two methods will help you identify areas in a chart where you should be an aggressive buyer while avoiding the major selling period. Let's assume that you are the type of individual who likes to own specific stocks or cryptos and are not in a position to actively trade because of your personality or maybe because it's a self-directed IRA or 401k. Let's also assume that you don't like chasing stocks and you'd rather buy after the price has corrected aka move down significantly. Something similar to buying low and selling high. These two methods discussed here are gonna be of some help. Let's assume that now that Tesla is off its highs, you've been wanting to own it, but you don't want to buy it if there's more downside. You'd rather buy it if it's showing signs of a recovery. Or maybe you've been watching Ethereum, wanting to own Ethereum. Now that it's not trading in the 4000s, the question becomes, is it a good buy as it's trading around the 1800 level? Or is it gonna go down? Of course, you've been wanting to own it and you'd like to own it on its way up rather than own it on its way down how can you tell or let's say you've been wanting to own netflix for a while now that it's not trading in the 700s it's trading as close to 200 the question becomes is this a good entry for a recovery higher or if you go in too early are you going to be part of the next wave down obviously you want to avoid further action on the downside while taking advantage of the next big trend whenever the market offers that opportunity or maybe you'd like to buy nvidia now that it's down almost 50 percent off its recent high but you don't want to be caught on the next massive seller. You'd rather own it when it's ready and primed for a recovery move to the upside. Okay, let's take a look at the method. Based on the MACD settings video which I recorded recently, links are going to be in the description of this video. What we're going to do is take our MACD setting options and we're going to go to this MACD setting here and we're going to use it in terms of determining the moving averages that we're going to use for this method. So we're going to take the first two numbers of this MACD setting and use it in the following way. We're going to take two moving averages in this format. 8 period being the exponential EMA with a value of 8 and a simple moving average with a value of 13. Now we could have used both as exponential moving averages but we're going to keep one as simple average which is the bigger value because it gives better signals and is more smooth. There's two ways to approach this. Method number one is a simple crossover between the 8 and the 13 period moving average where the 8 period moving average moves above of the 13 period moving average that's method number one here we can see for tesla the last time we had a crossover and a bullish crossover at that was late 2019 uh -oh. and incidentally as you will see with all of the charts in this example in the current market now we are seeing a bearish crossover between the 13 and the eight month moving average which means that the next time tesla is going to be a buy is going to be in the months ahead when there's going to be a future crossover where the eight period exponential moving average is going to cross over above the 13 period simple moving average now you can see this means that this is going to take many many months and in that time frame one can continue building cash as they wait for the next opportune moment to re-enter any instrument that you've been looking to own and is now at a discount from its recent highs the same is true for ethereum the last time we had a bullish crossover was in early let's call it april may of 2020 on its way to this massive run and again here as i've stated most of the instruments in the current market are showing this most recent bearish crossover which means it's going to be many months down the road before we get a crossover between the moving averages so this method forces you to be very patient and not rush to buy because who knows there could be more serious downside and who knows how long it might take so it makes sense to wait for the next medium to long-term entry signal. The same situation is true for Netflix and for Nvidia. Method number two is wait for a failed crossover. In this example, we went below the 13 period moving average. Looked like we were going down, but actually what happened is we have uniform activity back above the 13 period moving average. This is a failed crossover. And especially if it is uniform action, as we can see here, if I draw a line in the middle, we have uniform action. As we can see, we have equal time and space on each side to the left and to the right of our middle line showing that it is indeed uniform action so once you observe this uniform action rejection and a re-entry back above the 13 period moving average this tends to be a good indication that actually you're going to be moving higher now i must
must say that you'd want to see the crossover fail. In other words, you want to see the 8 period moving average at least go below the 13 period moving average and back above it. Sometimes they do come and touch it, but there's no actual attempt to cross under. So I would say it's good to wait and see that there's actual some confirmation that there was a move and a dip below the line and back above it. Even though if they just touch the line and move higher, as you see over time, this becomes more evident the more you practice this. Sometimes they just touch and they bounce and they go higher. But what I'm saying is you want to see evidence of uniform activity rejection and at the very least a sign that it went below the 13 period moving average and back above it. Oh, let's take a look at some examples now. Here we have Facebook again on the monthly. If I draw a line right there, we can see that this is close to symmetrical action to the left and to the right. In other words, this re-entry here back above the 13 period moving average is a sign that now the momentum is moving higher. Now we see something similar again right there. We go slightly below the line and back above it. That is symmetrical support for method number two. In other words, a failed crossover attempt means that you're going to continue on the previous trend and in this case would continue going higher. And as I stated, sometimes they do touch the line. There's no actual crossover and even that failed crossover does give indication of momentum to the upside. Again, we touch the line here. No actual crossover attempt. We just touched it and again, that is indication of failed crossover and the momentum did continue moving higher. By the way, here we have Microsoft Weekly and we can see an example where we have the EMA of 8 and the SMA of 13. Notice here we have uniform activity rejection as the crossover failed, this time indicating a continuation of the trend which is to the downside. Now compare that which is this failed crossover with uniform action as a reversal sell signal downwards with the same chart. This time we are using both EMA of 8 and EMA of 13 and notice that we don't get that failed crossover as a signal and that's why or at least one reason why I prefer to use Boom. the 13 SMA as opposed to using the 13 EMA. The Nasdaq late 2018 early 2019 we have a failed crossover it went below it and back above it with uniform activity which was indication that this trend that was higher was gonna continue after we saw that uniform activity where we recaptured the 13 week moving average in other words a failed crossover means that the previous trend would continue if we take a look at the nifty and draw a midpoint line right there we can see almost uniform activity left and the right has the same amount of time and space in other words we had a bearish crossover that did not last because the market would turn around and retake the 13 period moving average. This retaking of the moving average after uniform action below the 13 period moving average means that the previous bullish trend would continue. By the way after years of underperformance recently we've seen the energy space and the commodity space come back to life as we see crude oil and the energy space reclaim and become market leadership as they recently did confirm bullish cross overs on their moving averages. These two methods will help you identify areas in a chart where you should be an aggressive buyer while avoiding the major selling period.